So you're looking to get into flat glass, like commercial, residential, all that kind of stuff. This video is for you. My name is Max, I own MC Tint. This is my shop. I mainly do automotive, but recently I've been really branching out into flat glass stuff. And it's been a journey, learning it all. I was probably just in less shoes like you, where you're kind of trying to learn about it, watching all these YouTube videos and all that kind of stuff. And if you've watched a bunch of YouTube videos and stuff, you know there are some out there and there's some really good ones that I've learned some bunch from too but there's a ton of information and stuff that I've learned that nobody talks about and I wish they would have talked about so I'm gonna make a little series here of going over film the glass charts installation techniques bidding jobs kind of just a little series to get you started into flat glass because like I said there's not a ton of good information on YouTube about it or videos and so I'm gonna make a little series to help you guys get started with flat glass. I'm gonna go out on a wild limb here and say, if you're looking to get into flat glass, you're probably a little scared. And God knows I was too. I've been tinting automotive for almost five years now and I'm really confident in it, but flat glass stuff, it was this new thing and I was honestly really, really scared. When I first started to wanna get into it, I had been talking to a ton of people, looking in forums, watched like every YouTube video that exists on flat glass. And there were so many unanswered questions. It re was really, really frustrating. And that's one of the reasons why I wanna make this series is to try to answer those. That's basically, I wish I would have seen this series that I'm gonna make before I did all this. So I'm gonna try to do my best to give you all the information as far as insulation techniques, you know, all that stuff. So one of the things I did too, Expel offers a course. It's a week long course down in San Antonio going over flat glass stuff. And I went there, took it, learned a ton, met some people. So now I'm factory trained or certified with Expel's line of films. They go for installation techniques, like uh, all the technical stuff, all that. But in this video specifically, I'm gonna talk about film to glass chart. Even if you come from automotive world, it's kind of a whole different ball game. Despite being flat and a little less complicated in its general sense, it actually is quite complicated. And I've gone to great lengths to figure all this out. And so I know I'm doing it right because that's the only way I do things. Now, automotive film is a completely different beast and it's a completely different film and if anyone ever tries to put automotive film on your windows run away don't do it it's a completely different thing automotive film does a much better job of absorbing film whereas flat glass stuff usually bounces heat a lot more although some films do absorb stuff so in this video i'm going to talk about primarily one thing and that is film to glass charts because before you even talk about films or we talk about techniques or put film on windows we need to cover this because this is really really important when you get into flat glass this chart tells you what film you can put on a certain type of window, which is a huge deal when it comes to flat glass. Because as you can imagine, if you come from automotive, like me, if you screw up someone's window on a car, it may not be the end of the world. If it's an expensive car, it might be an expensive window, but whatever. And it's pretty hard to screw up automotive film. It's kind of all the same besides percentages. You can put whatever on there. It's fine. Flat glass wise, you can't. There's, they, they make these charts so you can see what type of window you have and see what type of film goes on the window. Now, this chart is more specific for Expel because that's the brand I use. Although if you use pretty much any other type of brand, as far as I know, I've seen other companies film the glass charts. They're all really similar and they kind of do the same thing. They have, although the films will be different, you have the films on the left, the different type of windows up here and what films are acceptable. So they're all pretty similar and what you learn in this video will probably apply to all those other ones as well. So. The first thing is, yeah, you have all these different type of films, but what everyone gets confused about and what I was super confused about is how the heck do you know what kind of window you're working with? And I was like trying to figure this out for so long and I, I didn't know. And long story short, most of the time you can't unless you have some sort of tool. So you kind of have to stop yourself right here and figure out how serious you are about getting into flat glass. If it's going to be worth you buying some sort of tool to measure your windows because if you're just out there throwing whatever film you want on any window, you might have a problem down the road. Although it is quite uncommon, some of these films do absorb a lot of heat and can cause problems. And you need to know what type of glass you're dealing with, or you might screw yourself and lose a lot of money. So I'm gonna show you the tool I have and I use to measure windows, and that'll kind of give you a better idea of how this works. Uh, so if you'll know, you'll see on these charts, there's like a bunch of green and red, blah, blah, blah. There's different, there's the categories up top are like single pane, tinted, clear, uh, dual pane, clear tinted, dual pane, low E surface number two, low E surface three, dual pane, blah, blah, blah. And I'll talk about that. 
So these are, you, you look on here and you know, if it's green, you can use it. If it's red, you can. If it's a yellow one, it has to get approved by them, which is pretty rare. And the reason this chart exists, what it's derived from is absorption rates is from what I, my understanding is some of these films absorb a lot of heat. And when on certain types of windows, having a film that absorbs a ton of heat can cause problems, whether it's seal failure, a breakage, something like that. So that's the biggest one when it comes to this kind of stuff is, you know, what kind of film absorbs a lot. And usually you'll see a lot of the darker films will kind of get you into sketchier areas because as you can imagine, a darker film absorbs more heat. There are some films on here that are pretty safe across the board, but still this is something you need to do. And a lot of companies offer like warranties, lifetime warranties or something like that on their film. And you have to know what kind of glass you're putting it on to get that kind of warranty and know that it's acceptable or else they're not gonna even mess with it. So you need to figure this out if you're gonna do flat glass and warranty your work and you know, if you're really trying for this, you gotta understand this. So this is my Glass Check Elite. This is a tool I use to hold up to windows and it measures how many panes it has, how thick they are, where the low E coating is on, if it's laminated, all that kind of jazz. And I'll show, I'll, I can show you this when I, I have a residential window that I use as a peel board and I'll hold it up. So commonly, I'm not an expert. And if you hear anything in this video that you think I can improve on or learn from, please let me know. I've done, I have enough under my belt to like kind of have a pretty good idea of what I'm doing. And that's why I'm starting to make this series. But anyways, when you're doing residential stuff, a lot of the time, they're gonna be dual pane windows, low E surface two or low E surface three. Those are like the most two common ones you'll see in residential. I've metered quite a few houses now and like across the board, that's like by far the most common. And there's quite a few of them too. Some windows will have a little tag in the bottom, which you might be able to pick apart and figure out what it is. But honestly, I've had horrible luck with trying to do that. And it you, usually they're just numbers on and they don't mean anything. So you're mainly gonna be dealing with dual pane windows on houses. Sometimes they're clear, but you need to know what where the low E coating is. And you're like, huh, what's a low E coating? Well, low E, the E stands for emissivity. Emissivity is a value given to a surface of something of how well it rejects heat. And low E, the lower the, the E value, the emissivity value, the more it reflects. So think of like a piece of polished steel versus a black body or a black piece of wood. The aluminum or the, the shiny metal is gonna have a much lower emissivity value than the black piece of wood would, like if a black painted piece of wood, it's because this is gonna bounce a lot more heat and or energy, whereas the black stuff's gonna absorb a lot. So that's what low E is, emissivity. That's what it comes from. And it's not something to be scared of because you can totally tint low E windows, but you gotta know what kind of low E it is, or you're kind of just hoping it works. And like I said, it's not super common. You see, you'll see a failure, but you're gonna wanna look out for it. Another one is you'll see laminated windows or triple pane windows. Triple pane is super rare unless you're in a super cold place, like, I don't know, Germany or Alaska or something. Like you really pretty much never see triple pane windows on like anywhere in the States that I know of. Pretty rare. Laminated windows are something to look out for too. It's really, you, you can see all the red on the laminated part. Laminated windows are not very acceptable for a lot of things, but you'll see this if there's like a pool nearby, you have to do it for code or some commercial job where they have to have a laminated window for some safety code regulation, blah, blah, blah. But you need to know if it's laminated. So that, and you, you will screw yourself. If you don't know and you screw up that window, you're gonna be out of ton of money. So this is my glass check leak. And I'll walk over here to this window and kind of show you how it works and how I read these windows. So I'm gonna take a reading of this window. I'm gonna show you what it comes out as. So you can see there's the two panes, the two is flashing, okay? So there's a low E on surface two. So we know that. It's a dual pane window and with the low E on surface two. Cool, now we know that. Oh, I almost dropped that. So we can go over here to this film and glass chart and we know it's a dual pane with a low E on surface two. Okay, awesome. All these films in the green will work. So that's huge. Now you just figure that out and you know what films you can put on there. You have to know this if you're putting film on residential commercial style windows. So this one I have, this Glass Check Elite is, set this camera up here. This one is really expensive. This was like a $1,600 tool. And I talked to my rep about it quite a bit. And I was like, dude, this is expensive. Like, should I buy it? And he kind of basically told me, he's like, if you screw up one flat glass job, how much money are you gonna be out if you screw up some windows? Uh, probably a lot more than $1,600. So if you're serious about getting a flat glass, 
buy this. Um, there are some cheaper ones out there that'll just tell you if it has a low E coating, although that doesn't do you any good if you know don't know what surface it's on. So this is kind of, if you're serious about it, it's worth it. But like I said, it is an investment. So that's up to you how serious you wanna get. Another thing I wanna talk about is shade. And you're like, huh? This is something that's not as common you see failures with from what I hear, but it's still something you kind of have to think about. This largely mainly applies to like larger windows. I think I heard somewhere once someone say like greater than 40 square feet or something like that. But just something to think about. Uh, if you have like a bigger window and part of it is partially shaded or like let's say you have a four by eight window, right? And this is also, <laughs> they talked about this when I took this class but it's really hard to figure out because unless you sit in front of that window all day, how do you know if it's half shaded? But it's something you need to think about too, is basically if you have a film that uh, absorbs a ton of heat, which some of these do, they have a high absorption rate and the absorption is on all your films. You should be able to like look at the film and see what the absorption number is. It'll kind of give you an idea of what you're working with. But anyways, if you have a film that absorbs a ton of heat, like some super dark film, blah, 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 and you have this ginormous window and half of it is shaded. Well, think about it. Half of that window is getting really hot, absorbing all this heat from the sun. The other half is nice and cool. That's when you run into problems with glass breakage because expansion rates get all funky because your window is heating up and cooling down in different spots and it expands, blah, 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 it cracks. So that's something to think about. Uh, from, my, from what I hear, again, I'm not an expert. It's mainly when you're dealing with like a lot bigger windows. So it's not as something to worry about if you're doing like a bunch, you know, residential style windows are usually pretty small. You get some big ones, but not that big of a deal. Additionally, on residential stuff, you're probably not doing a dark film. Um, maybe you are, but it kind of depends. So another thing I need to talk about is different types of film. And this applies to your absorption rate. So if you've looked at flat glass stuff, you probably have seen shiny films. And shiny films are super common for good reason because they do an awesome job at what they do. And they've gotten really good nowadays where there's a uh, series in here called Evening View and it's the metallic, you know, that silver look on the outside, but from the inside, it almost has like a darker look. It doesn't look shiny. Back in the old days, you know, old days, uh, you'd see a lot of films that were shiny, like shiny on both sides, like dark in there, like see-through tinfoil. Uh, so they've gotten really good now, but uh, those those shiny films are really good at bouncing heat and not absorbing it and that's why one of the reasons they're really popular and they're quite affordable so if you think of a film like that a shiny film is going to do a really good job of bouncing heat right it's a metalized film so it's and remember the emissivity value think about it, it that surface is going to have a low emissivity value because it's going to be bouncing all that heat off right where some of these films are more like darker or some of them are darn near clear with like a little tint and blah 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 some of those films absorb a lot more heat. So that's something you gotta think about too when you're deciding on a film, you know, like what's gonna work best? Is this film, am I scared of this? Like, does this make me nervous, blah, blah, blah. So not only should you look at your film, the glass chart to think, is this film good? You gotta think of some other things that are going on if that film is gonna work for the window. So I know you probably saw me tell you to get this and you're like, oh, 1600 bucks, blah, blah, blah. Here's another thing why I recommend getting something like this or this is when you go for a consultation for a flat glass job, you don't just show up to the house and tin it, right? You're going there talking to them about films, what they want to do, the windows, you're measuring stuff, blah, blah, blah. If you show up there with your packet of films, you have your film to glass chart, you have this. And before you even really talk about film, you might get an idea of what they want, but you say, okay, I'm gonna go measure, meter all your windows, and we're gonna figure out exactly what type of film we can put on these windows. It looks super professional. And like, I think that's so big when it comes to like, you're going to someone's house and you wanna look professional as a tinter. Like sometimes tinters get a bad rep and this kind of sets you above. Cause it's like, hey, look, like I'm not screwing around. Like I wanna do this right. And pulling something like this out, definitely like steps you up in the game. Cause you're like, oh, the homeowner's like, wow, this, this person doesn't screw around. You have this nice tool. You show them all your stuff. You're like, oh, we can put this on here, blah, blah, blah. It looks really good. So something I would recommend doing, although it is expensive, if you're serious about it, it's pocket change. Like I was saying, I just looked up low E window meter. There's a bunch of different options out there that are a lot cheaper. Um, there's the one I got right there. Uh, some of these, I think they'll just tell you if it has a low E coating. I'm not sure if they tell you where, but also something to think about too is they don't tell you if it's a laminated window. Like, uh, I don't know. If you're doing like mainly residential stuff, uh, like I said, 
the low E2, low E3 are going to be like your twos that you see all the time and they're dual pane. So not as much of a worry, but like I said, having that tool just gives you that little bit more confidence. And like when you're doing this big of a job, then usually these flat glass jobs, especially if you're doing a full house or whatever, are a lot of money and there are a lot of windows and you don't want to screw it up and walking away from it feeling confident about the job. Like, hey, I know what kind of window it is. I put the right film on there. We're good. I can get that warranty. It makes you feel a lot better at the end of the day because I've seen people like even posting groups and stuff and they're like, I'm kind of scared. What if it breaks? Blah, blah, blah. If you do this right, you shouldn't be as worried about it. So it's kind of a nice thing to have. All right. I hope that video helped you guys kind of understand how this film, the glass chart works and how you can use it. Um, if you're not using it and you're doing flat glass, um, stop, you know, use this. It's really important when it comes to flat glass. And I haven't seen a single YouTube video that even talks about film the glass chart. So it's a big deal. Um, like I said, the window failure, stuff like that. I don't think it's that common, but I think following this and using the right film, blah, 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 it's going to help you sleep a lot better at night if you do it. I know it helps me and I won't do anything unless I'm 100% confident in it and I know what I'm doing and I'm doing it right. So this is a big deal to learn. I hope that helps. Up next, I'm going to be doing some insulation techniques and follow it up by maybe bidding and stuff like that. But let me know what you guys want to see. If I missed something or you want to see something else, comment below. I'm happy to make a video out of it. I'm just trying to share all the information that I've learned over the past six months. It's been a wild ride learning about all this stuff. So thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you on the next one.